Here you go, the king of the worm rail fence battlefields here at Gaines Mill. Look at that. It goes all the way out to where the cars are parked. You just barely see my motorcycle. Pretty cool, huh? So, a rock. Wood, 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 wood. And then one at the top. There, you can make your own. Balloons over the battlefield. From this vantage point, the Chickahominy Valley opens up in front of you. Before June 27th, McClellan's engineers built 10 different bridges across the Chickahominy, connecting the two wings of the Union Army. Porter's reinforcements crossed three of those bridges. If you had been posted here with binoculars on June 27th, you would have witnessed a historical first. Near the Union headquarters at Trent House, two miles to the south, that way, Professor Thaddeus S.C. Lowe launched his balloon and observed Lee massing to attack Porter here. Closer to Richmond, another balloon, out that way, could be seen rising above the horizon. In its basket was famed Confederate artilleryman E. Porter Alexander, who reported the crossing of Porter's Union reinforcements. For the first and only time during the war, both sides used aerial reconnaissance at the same time. Here's a good picture. Grapevine Bridge, Trent House, Federal Balloon, Alexander's Bridge, Woodbury's Bridge, Union Batteries. You are here. There's the Chickahominy and Boatswain's Creek. And then over there, there's the Confederate Balloon. Pretty cool. This is a farm road originally designed to uh, help members of the Watt family. You can see their farm out in the distance. Load their stuff up into the wagon and head out to Richmond, which is directly behind me. This is also the federal position during the Battle of Gaines Mill. The Confederates under Hood in the evening, the waning hours of the day, made this massive charge coming up from Boatswain's Creek down in the woods that way and uh, completely routed the federal line. The plaques say that this 55,000 man charge was the largest single charge, infantry charge, Lee would execute in his entire career during the war. I found that interesting. I didn't know that. Well, it wouldn't be much of a Civil War battlefield in Virginia if it didn't have any cannon, and here are two of them. Two cannon. Why are they here? Because this is the final stand. Looks like the bird poop was pretty murderous here. Civil War artillery was a splendid defensive weapon, particularly when the battlefield landscape offered the gunners open fields of fire. They would have been shooting down into the woods there where the Confederates were charging. At Gaines Mill, the woods plagued the Union artillery. Several gaps in the trees, however, offered a direct line of sight toward the massing Confederate infantry 300 yards away. Along most of the line, the Union gunners fired through or over the open woods. During the battle's climactic moments, these Union gunners of the 5th Massachusetts Battery momentarily stopped their fire as retreating Union infantry poured out of the woods in front of you. That way. When the advancing Confederates appeared, the gunners blasted the Confederate infantry. The Southerners returned fire, leaving an astonishing carnage of dead horses and wounded artillerymen. The battery limbered up and moved to higher and safer ground behind you. Oh, slightly higher, yeah. Lee's first victory at a huge cost. By nightfall, Union resistance on Turkey Hill had ended. Except for the wounded, most of the federal forces, forces recrossed the Chickahominy overnight and joined the remainder of the Army of the Potomac. In just two days of brutal fighting, Lee audaciously divided his army, drove one Union Corps across the Chickahominy, and successfully ended McClellan's thrust to Richmond. The cost, however, was staggering. 
Both sides combined lost 15,000 casualties, the greatest loss in any battle of the entire Peninsula Campaign, and second only to Shiloh at that stage of the war. Before the area could recover, the armies returned in the spring of 1864. The savage battle of Cold Harbor swept across some of these same farms, leaving miles of fortifications, 18,000 more casualties, and untold misery in its path. Look at this. In 1865, a photographer recorded this scene of unburied dead on the Gaines Mill battlefield. Three years afterwards, the lack of decent burials influenced the War Department to establish a system of national cemeteries. Five were conducted around Richmond.